So this is um, part six of the Super Ghouls and Ghosts tutorial. This stage is it's pretty it's a pretty sh short stage, but there's some cool stuff we can do here. Um, they're a little bit tricky. But there's really nothing wrong with just using a magic cast per a reamer in this stage because time gains are. I mean, you you can save some time here, but if you want to keep your run going, definitely go for the uh, magic one magic cast per arena here. But uh, we're gonna try some cool stuff here, so let's just uh, run this at uh, normal speed first. You get some reference here. We'll scare away the arena, and then we'll kill them both with one magic cast. This is a pretty cool strat, actually, but it's a bit hard to explain how to do this. Um, it's a bit tricky to do. Uh, like, it's a bit finicky to, to work with, but once you know it, it will usually work out. Let's just uh, take this from the beginning here. So what I like to do here first is a crouch jump. We'll always pretty much land up in the same place in the end here. So we're gonna chain six jumps together here, so that's one jump. Two, three, four, five, and then... So here I'm landing, um, so roughly where we want to j make our last jump. And we can just keep jumping, but um, we might want to look roughly where our, like, the tip of the helmet is, and, like, the, the, the front of our face. We roughly line up with this line here, back in the wall. The, uh, from the place from where we can do this jump is pretty lenient, something like, I don't know, let's just make something up, something like that, as long as you're, like, front of your face is inside this box, you're pretty much good to go, I think. But we might want to try to make the jump from the same place every time to keep the, the amount of moving parts in this uh, brick down to a minimum. So I'll do my jump here, my last jump. And I'm gonna land up here. From here we're gonna do a double jump. And you can vary your timing with this double jump a little bit. I like to do it pretty fast double jump. I not just smash the button, just time it pretty fast. And then fire dagger right under here. So probably the most important thing with this trick I would assume is like your, your dagger timing. That it's just the right height, I think. But it's um it's kinda hard to like explain in detail how to do this trick because it, it's hard to know why this trick doesn't work when you try it. There's no like easy tells to see. Oh, I did this thing wrong. So you're just gonna have to try this a lot and see see if you can get like a um. Like what what I do basically is when I get up here, since since most of the time I'm gonna be standing on the same place down here, which means that I'm gonna be standing roughly the same place up here. So I'll just go on with like a muscle memory feel for when I should press here, so I'll just press jump, jump and fire, and I'll push him away. Uh, and th this is only the hard part, this is the, the only hard part of this trick, um, and you're, you're gonna have to try it a couple of times to get the feel for how you should do the jump and push him away. If he doesn't get pushed away, we can usually uh, just uh, start charging our magic, um, and dodge a swoop and kill him, and then just proceed as we would otherwise. So this trick is usually safe, even if you fail it. But yeah, it's a bit tricky. And like I said, you can just kill him with magic and keep going. The time saves aren't extreme, so... Anyway, so we'll just keep going here. We're gonna do a double jump up here. Make sure to make uh, this jump high enough. I, for whatever reason, I keep doing my jump, double jump here too early, so I don't reach the top here. A bit tight, but pretty easy in a, anyway, so... Just throw our dagger here before we land. Which will push the arena up a bit. And then we'll do the same here. We'll jump over and fire dagger. And you can see on his arm here, he gets pushed up even more. And here's where we, uh, we charge our magic. Let's jump, turn around, and when the magic's charged, we'll just let go so we'll cast when he lands. And you can see we're gonna get both arena here. So that's a really cool start. We only have to do one magic cast for two arena. We'll save a. Uh, I don't know how long a magic cast is, but. Let's say two seconds. I'm not very scientific when it comes to time, uh, time, so you'll just have to decide if if it's worth trying for this. And then, regardless how we 
did the first part here. We're gonna line up our left side with this spike here, with this edge of this spike here in the floor. You can see I have a foot on, on the spike. From here we can just stop moving, turn right and do a double jump. We're gonna get pushed up here into the chest reveal box. Then we're just gonna use the, the chest as a stepping stone here. So here's an, uh, an interesting trick, which uh, it looks a lot more scary than it actually is. So as fast as we get, get up on the ladder here, we're gonna do a forward jump, then just climb down the ladder. And as you can see, I managed to squeeze past the bird, but it looks kinda scary. But there's some uh, variations that can happen here, so let's uh, go over that first. See here. So here's um, another one. And as you can see, I can still just uh, just jump and climb down. The only thing to consider here is that we need to be climbing pretty fast here, because otherwise we're gonna get hit by the neck, which is a pretty wonky hitbox. But I mean, we want to be climbing immediately anyway, so that's ju just the same thing as the first one, pretty much. And then we have a bit more, uh, bit more uh, interesting pattern here. So this time, I climb up the ladder. You can see the bird is already extending. So when I do my jump, I see him extending. So I do a double jump to lose some speed, and I'm going to miss him. Just to see that in full speed here. You can see that you have a lot of time to react here. You see here, like, I take a pretty long time before I do my double jump. I could probably even be a bit closer, maybe, but yeah, so you have a lot of ample time to react to him doing that. But you just need to be ready for the, the, the early extend. Do a double jump to save it. we get past that guy. Here's the next um, finicky trick of this stage. So you can... Um, I mean the easy way here is of course we'll just... Um, just uh, let me remove this thing here. Okay, there we go. So the easy thing is of course just to walk off this edge. Walk up maybe here roughly. Um, or somewhere there at least. Just fall off the edge anyway and release the magic on this guy. That's the, the easy way of course. We can get past these guys without even using magic here, so that's what we're gonna try for here. So you can see here, we can actually look at this in a normal speed first, so you can for reference here. And just push down the reamer, and we'll get past. So what's happening here is um, we're gonna hold down pretty much the entire time here. And do a crouch jump to the right. And then we're gonna do another crouch jump here. Now, the, what the Arimer does here, is he, he'll fly up when we get close enough. So he'll fly up, like, way up here. Um, but the, the Arimers don't like being off-screen, so he's going to fly down again. You see here. Flies up, and then he comes back down, because he realizes he's too high up in the air. But what can happen here, uh, so the timing for this is roughly, roughly here. When our foot is aligned with this pillar. Roughly, this is roughly when we want to jump. If we make the jump too early, we'll push the screen up. So when we land here, the Arimer can kind of stand, realize that since we're raising the screen, he can start walking on this platform up here and like walk over here and do a swoop and stuff and we're gonna get destroyed. So we have to do the jump uh, late enough. You can see, even though my foot is like in the middle of this thing now, uh, in the pillar, even this will work. But what happens if you do your jump too late? You see, even though I'm holding down, I'm gonna have a standing frame when I land for my jump, so if I had landed like over here instead, I would obviously get hit by the Arimer. So that's what happens if you do your jump too late. Now from here, we'll just keep holding down, do a jump to the left here. You can see this is a pretty fast double jump. Like I'm, I haven't even crossed like, I haven't even crossed like the the um, 
shadow here. On the wall there. Um, we'll do our double jump and immediately fire dagger, which will push the Aremer down. We'll just keep holding down and jumping so we don't walk off the edges. And then we're past something that can happen, for example here. Um, check this out here. Something that can happen. So here, I have my foot just over this when I do my jump over the pillar. And I do my jump here, and you can see I'm pretty late here. I've like crossed the, the shadow. And the Arima flies up. So, but even though he does this, I can actually salvage this, at least in this case, in this instance here. So I land here, I land jump, and push him down again. So I can make it up, but it's a bit scary, because... If you start firing daggers at, uh, like, let's rewind a little bit here. So if you start firing daggers at, like, his lo lower body, he's going to go up instead. So if you mistime your daggers, like, enough times, you can push him, like, up all the way over here. So he can be standing here when you're jumping up here. This can work out, you can just keep walking, because when you reach roughly this pillar here, he's going to go away by himself. But, I mean... It's pretty scary when you have to keep pushing the Arima out of the way to climb this thing and then keep going here. So we'd much rather just succeed in uh, this part here and doing this jump a bit faster and throw the dagger earlier and push him down instead of having to do these crazy jumps. And that's pretty much for the entire stage, uh, excluding the boss of course. Um, this. Both the, the Reamer strats here are... You're gonna have to try them out for yourself and see if you can get them to work. Once you get a feel for them, they'll work quite often actually, like I said earlier, but... It takes some time to get the feel for them. Let's go ahead uh, to the boss instead here. Not that far. Okay. We'll just uh, charge magic. We can uh, watch this at uh, normal speed first to just see what's going on. Something like that. So two magic casts is enough to kill this boss. And the way I'm timing this is by an audio cue. So let's pause the background music here and raise the in game volume. So, what I'm listening for here is the three first notes in the music, the boss music to play. And when the third one is done, I'll release my magic. So, let's see that. Like that. So, that's something like this. One, two, three, release. Those are the three notes I mean, so... And by by the time they're over, we can just release magic. And the, the positioning here... Um, it's... Uh, I don't know how pre precise it is. It's not very precise, actually, I guess. But I like to... You can see where, where my where the middle of my body is, basically, because of the, uh, the magic swirl here. So I'm standing... My middle position is like almost, like just be before his middle position, I guess. Um, and what this is going to do is, like I could have st stood probably a bit, like I could probably have stood here, but what would happen when I release my magic then is it will go something like this, and it will go all the way over here and cause lag and all that. So by standing a bit further into this guy, the dragon is going to go off screen here and just disappear. So, we won't lag the game down. So, release the magic. And we'll start charging a new one. And... More often than not, I should say, because Astaroth is just really unpredictable, but more often than not, you can just stand in place here, and he'll walk past us. And here's a very interesting... Uh, mechanic with these, with both Astaroth and Negroth, is that when you crouch in front of them, uh, you lock them into place. So this guy can't move right now because I'm crouching near him, um, which is very good. So uh, roughly, the the max distance I can be for shooting my dragon is this might be close enough. Ideally, we want our our foot here, like just touch his boot. That should be the max distance, roughly. So here I'm not sure if I'm close enough, so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm holding down and left now, and just 
quickly letting go of down and pushing it again to like tiptoe forward. Like that. But, uh, okay, let's try that again. So I'm just holding holding down left and just quickly letting go of down and pressing it again. So I'm just getting up for a little bit. Now I'm pretty sure that this is this should be close enough. But while I was playing this, I wasn't quite sure. So I do the same thing. I just tiptoe forward a little bit. And you can see even this close. Like I'm getting... My helmet is getting kicked right now. Even this is... I won't get hit here. So we, we have some... Quite a few pixels to work with here. And I'll just release my magic and we will get rid of him. And that's the entire stage pretty much. But... But I hear you say... Red, I lost my armor! The previous stage! Help! Don't worry, <laughs> we got a strat for this. So, if you lost your armor in the previous stage, for example, which is easily happened against the boss, um, there's a very good backup in this stage, which is... Uh, it's, it's really fast. It might even be, like, equal with going around the entire stage with gold armor, except, of course, we're going to... Um, we would have to do a recovery in the next stage, so that's where the, uh, the actual time loss would be. But, um... We'll just roll this on normal speed first. Just walk up to the Arima and wake him up. And then just bait a swoop and avoid it. So, and then we'll jump up here. And into this uh, genie here, over the wall. And very conveniently, the Arima here is gone. So it's like, everything just falls into place when we do this. And I think the only tricky part here is, when we land here, we're gonna have to do our jump pretty fast. Like up here again, because you can see th what would happen otherwise. You can see this genie up here. He's like, he's on his way up right now. So if we delay too much, he's going to go too far off screen and despawn. So I do my second jump while he's barely still in the screen and he doesn't despawn. I think that's the only thing to consider here. And then, of course. Make sure you jump into him when he's looking to the right, because that means we're on his right side, so we will get boosted to the right. Otherwise we would get pushed to the left and just off somewhere. And then the, um, the Astroth fight here, it's not too bad. We can just keep our distance, but be wary of his laser. Like, if we... You can, you can almost keep him, like, so you only see his... Uh, if you want to play it, like, really far away, you can... Make it so you only see like this part of him, and you can usually still hit the head, maybe maybe you need to see a bit more. Like this is only all you need on screen pretty much, and you can hit his head, but just be wary that you usually shoot his laser straight so you don't jump into it if you do that. So here's some advanced strat I do, which will be covered more, much more in uh, loop 2, but if we sit really close to him, he's gonna fire, and now I jump because I don't need to wait anymore, but I could still be sitting there. You can see the fire won't hit. I was sitting like here, so the, the fire won't hit me. We, we could be sitting there still if we wanted to. This is a very good bait, and then we'll just either fire one dagger on the way up, and then three more, or you can do something like let's see here. You can fire two dagger, two max height daggers, and that's gonna hit. Double jump, throw one more, and throw two on the way down. So that's five daggers hit in one jump. And just remember that when he's done with his fire, he's gonna shoot his laser, so just be ready for that. The, the way the laser works is just before, like, like uh, the, the fire is, um, the homing like property of the fire is pretty slow. So he'll, he'll target you and then shoot his fire, but the laser is pretty much like, just as he's ready to shoot the laser, he's he's choosing direction, he's still choosing like the direction. If you're trying to jump while he's targeting, he's gonna switch his target to where you're standing just when he's firing. Just be ready for that. But yeah, th this fight isn't very difficult if you keep your distance and just throw some daggers at him. And I mean, it's a pretty good recovery because otherwise you would have to fight all the, the Arimers without gold armor, and that's a big no, big no-no right there. So yeah, that's pretty much it for stage 6. So if you have any comments or questions or anything, just feel free to ask them, and I will see you guys for the next video.